Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing something a bit different. I'm going to show you how to evaluate whether you have a bad valve stem on your tire as well as how to change it. Now this won't just work for this specific tire. You can utilize this video or methodology whether it comes to lawnmower tires, ATV, boat, utility trailer, all different types of things. Now. That being said, there are different ways to do this. This is just the specific way I'm going to do it with the tools I have available to me. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to evaluate whether your valve stem is leaking. I blew these tires up probably four or five days ago in preparation of moving a few items and noticed when I walked into the shop today that the tire was low. Quickest and easiest way to check whether I have a valve stem issue or if there's a puncture in the tire, I'm going to go ahead, add some air back into this tire, fill it up to 50 PSI because that is what is recommended for this particular tire cold. And then I'll use soapy water all around this tire, specifically the valve stem, and see if that's where it's leaking from. Now, if you have more than a couple tires, say you have a lawnmower, your truck, maybe a trailer or something, I highly recommend this tool right here. It's just a little pistol grip. Uh, tire gauge as well as tire inflator. Everything's built into one, but this little pressure gauge right here, as you're filling the tire up, it's allowing the air to come through, but when you stop, it'll read the pressure of the tire itself. So instead of constantly going from a tire inflator to a tire pressure gauge, switching between the two to make sure you have the right pressure, this tool makes it a lot easier and they're relatively inexpensive. I'll make sure to link one somewhere up here as well as in the description. But it just takes a male fitting, Fortunately, this part just clips right into the stem valve of the tire. And from there, all you have to do is pull your trigger and let it fill up. So I'm trying to get this tire up to about 50 PSI. I have to compress the shut off just to reduce the noise in the background. But I'm having a very difficult time even getting it up to 40. The leak is so bad. So I want to go ahead and disattach this. And you'll notice that even a little bit of pressure on this valve is actually making it leak. So I have some soapy water here, quickest and easiest way. And I'm just going to spray along that valve. And you can see that bubbling right there. That is a clear indicator that you have a leak. When you see bubbling like that, that is what's going to let you know. And if I move this at all, it's immediately leaking drastically more air. So that valve stem is bad. Now, the next step I'm going to use is a small screwdriver. I'm just gonna get as much pressure out of this tire as possible, and then I'm gonna to have to break this tire from the bead in order to get this stem out. Even pressing on the side, so look at that. That's how bad this thing is. As mentioned, you could use just about anything as long as it fits down into the valve stem. I got this Allen key here, and it's a pretty good fit. I'm just gonna push down on the valve itself, and let all the air out of the tire, and that'll make it easier to break off the bead. Now the most difficult process involved with all this is getting the bead of the tire off the rim. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. The way I'm going to do this is I'm simply using the bottle jack that came with my vehicle to change my tire on the side of the road. And I have it on the back of my hitch. Now it doesn't necessarily need to be a hitch. You just need to find a sturdy piece of metal on your vehicle that it will allow the bottle jack to apply pressure. And as I put more force on this jack, it's slowly gonna push down that tire, eventually breaking the bead, or at least that's the thought behind this methodology. Easy as that. <laughs> now I should be able to revert that tire and hopefully I did not damage the tread. We will see if it's deformed here in a minute. Now that the bead is broken on all sides, I'll be able to get good access to the valve stem. 
So there is the valve stem underneath. It may be a little bit difficult to see, but in essence, what you have is right there is a rubber grommet on the bottom and on the outside. It's just another part of the rubber grommet. So I'm simply going to use a thin screwdriver in order to push this portion out and hopefully slide it back into the tire itself, removing it, and then I'll be able to insert the new one. I'm just using a relatively small uh, flathead screwdriver and I'm just pushing this outside grommet in and through this hole. Now there are better kits available if this is something that I was doing more often or I was aware that I was gonna start doing more often. I'd probably go buy one of those kits and then you don't even have to take the bead off. I'll go ahead and link one of those as well if you just prefer that methodology. But I nearly got it. And there we go. That valve stem is gone. Make sure that I don't have too much damage along that rim and I do not. And now hopefully when I push this tire down, I should be able to get that old valve stem out. Now that the bead has been broken and the old tire stem is out, I have these new stems here. And these are just tubeless tire valves. And essentially we have two sizes in the US. We have the 0.453 inch rim hole size and the 0.625. Generally when it comes to small utility trailers, lawnmowers, ATVs, anything basically smaller than a small truck, you're gonna be using the 0.453. After that, I can't say for certain which valve size you use. But this pack was less than $5 at the Loco Auto Shop. And as you can see, all it is is basically a stem on the bottom and top and that grommet that seals. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go inside the tire and push it through. But before I do that, I'm gonna add a little bit of grease to the outside or Vaseline, just so it's a bit easier to slip. Well, the can of grease must still be at the house I used to live in. So I just put a little bit of PB blaster on, take the cap off. And now I wanna go in here, break that bead and begin pushing it through. All I'm gonna do is kind of jimmy it towards the top And there it is. That is a brand new seated valve. That's not going anywhere. It's got a good firm fit. I was gonna get a metal one instead of this rubber based one, but it was gonna take five or six days to come in. So this will do for the time being, and I won't have to replace it hopefully for another couple of years or until I get a new tire. Last step we really have is to put air on it and get it back. Now, since it's just me, I wanna use a little bit of a non methodology. I wanna go ahead and sit on the tire that's gonna press the sides hopefully around and hopefully it'll reset the bead and I'm just going to slowly give it air and once I get it popped back on the bead I'll hop off the tire and fill it up the rest of the way. It seems like it's already getting set onto the bead fortunately. Yep that's already on the bead so that worked out a treat. Now put the tire up here and fill it up to 50 psi. I filled the tire up to 50 PSI once again, and then I removed the air gun. Once doing that, I grabbed the soapy water, and just like before, I just squirted a little bit inside the valve stem and around the valve stem. I wanted to make sure that the rubber grommet was seated and verified that I did remedy the issue I had previously. Well, I get the GoPro here and I'm taking a closer look, and clearly I don't have bubbles forming. I'm pushing around the outside and I don't see, hear, or feel air leaking from this new valve stem, so the repair was successful. Now, unfortunately, I had audio issues with that previous clip as well as my outro, but here we are. Guys, I do hope y'all enjoyed this video and hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, please make sure to share, like, subscribe for more, and as always, thanks for watching.